Good morning. Good to have you all here in God's house as uh, once again, even with the social distance and everything else, uh, we come before our Lord with praise and thanksgiving to receive his wonderful gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Uh, not much for announcements. Today is the day of Pentecost. We'll be celebrating God's sending of his Holy Spirit uh, that he poured out upon his disciples and he poured out upon us in our baptisms. Um, Pastor Fitch's going away service, or uh, I would guess card party, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the details for that is in here. His last Sunday will be June 14th. It'll be one of those bittersweet days. So um, we look forward to that and we kind of don't look forward to that. We'll just add that to another part of the strangeness that's going on. Like let's kind of let's do that. Um, I think we're going to, we've been having services on, uh, of course, our eight o'clock or 1045 and a Monday night and a Wednesday night. But we've decided that Wednesday nights we're gonna have kind of masks only for Wednesday nights. We figured we should offer at least one service where those who are most vulnerable feel like they can come to and everyone's wearing masks. So I think we're gonna do that on Wednesday nights. So when we post this at home, uh, anybody who's not coming because you kind of were hoping everyone would wear masks, we'll do that on Wednesdays. So we're gonna kind of do that. And we'll have some masks available too if somebody comes and they don't have one. So we figured we'd do that as well. Um, besides that though, I'm just gonna have you guys read your bulletins because everything's in the back there. Um, so that way, if you don't catch something, the responsibility's on you instead of on me. But look how that works. Um, but that's all I have. Does anyone have anything else before we get started? All right, well, the peace of the Lord be with you as we begin our worship this morning.
everyone would please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered this morning to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His only Son to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with this morning's intro, it taken from Psalm 104. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. 
O oh God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for this morning's scripture readings. Our Old Testament reading for this, the celebration of Pentecost, is taken from Numbers chapter 11, beginning with verse 24. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied. And they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord, Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with this morning's gradual. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. With the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Our epistle lesson is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and at this sound the multitude came together. And they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words, for these men are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Holy Gospel.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive, for as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue now by confessing our Christian faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with this morning's children's sermon from Pastor Anderson. Dobro jutro. Kak mi paže bajacja za vodnia. You probably didn't catch that. I'll, I'll count to 12 as you're thinking about what I said. En, to, tri, vira, fem, sek, shu, ot, ni, ti, el, vatelk. Different languages. We don't understand different languages. So today, let's think about languages a long, long time ago at the Tower of Babel. I started out by saying, good morning, how are you? That was in Russian. And then I counted to 12 in Norwegian. If some of you Russians are out there, or Norwegians that knew that, you understood that. But it's hard to understand somebody if you don't know their language. And that's kind of what happened at the Tower of Babel. Noah had built the ark. There'd been the great flood. Noah came out of the ark with all the animals. And then some time went on, probably quite a bit of time. And people were concerned that they needed to stay together. They didn't want to go out over all the earth. But God had told that to Adam and Eve about subduing the whole earth, and he gave the same command to Noah and to his three sons. But now the people weren't listening. So what did they do? They wanted to make a name for themselves. They wanted to stay together. So they built a city. They started building a city and a tower. And I suppose there were a lot of people there. Let's try to imagine there were women, men. They all came together to see this great thing that they were building. I suppose there were children and families there as well. And they all spoke the same language. But God was looking down and he saw that they were building this city and he saw that they were building this tower. And the idea was, 
If we have a tower and a city, we'll all stay together. So God was looking down and he said, as the Bible says, let us go down and confuse their language. Well, what does that mean? Let's think of this tower. Trying to build it high up into the sky is going to be something very special to keep them all together. They all had the same language, so God came down and by the power of the Holy Spirit changed their languages. So some people spoke one language, some people spoke another language, and then they went out over all the earth just like God said. And as we're thinking about that, God did not want them to build this big ugly old tower and city. He wanted them to go out over all the earth. And that's what they did. That's what God wanted. Now we're celebrating Pentecost Sunday. The colors in the church are red, the color of fire, because in the Bible it says the tongues of fire came down on the disciples' heads and they spoke other languages that they had never learned. How would you like to wake up in the morning and speak a new language that you'd never learned before? That'd be kind of strange. Well, I've studied some other languages and studying another language isn't always easy. But the Holy Spirit made the disciples speak these other languages that they'd never learned before. So at the Tower of the Babel, God was using language to scatter the people around the earth. But all those many years later, by the power of the Holy Spirit, God was preaching the gospel through the disciples and bringing people together with different languages because they all heard about Jesus in their own language. What did they hear? Well, Peter told them that Christ Jesus had died, paying for their sins on the cross, and then on the third day rose again from the dead. And then he told the people all to repent. That is, they're supposed to recognize that they were sinners and say to God, yes, I'm a sinner, forgive me. And what did God do? He forgave them. And the Bible says 3,000 people were baptized that day. Wow. This is the beginning of the church. You could say happy birthday to the church on Pentecost Sunday. Now, I want to sing one song with you, but can you imagine if this song is translated into all kinds of languages, it all says the same thing. Just like Bible translators take the Bible and they translate it into all these other languages in the world, so people, wherever they are, can read the Bible in their own language. Now, you kids are going to school with some kids that have come from all over the world. You have kids that have come with another language, and at first they have to learn English, and once in a while you hear them speaking with their mom or dad or another classmate with their language. You probably won't understand it. But when they talk in English, you can. So you have to get used to that, different sounds of different languages. But we're all creations of God, aren't we? And we have to learn to live with one another, but more importantly, to love the Lord Jesus. So let's sing a song about that. We all know Jesus loves me. So let's sing at least one stanza. Of Jesus loves me and then have a great day Jesus loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so little ones to him belong they are weak but he is strong yes Jesus loves me Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Have a great day in Jesus. Bye.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning's sermon is based off of our epistle reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. But before I get into dealing with our regular Acts reading for today, for this Pentecost Sunday, I want to add just a few more of the verses that follow it in St. Luke's account in Acts. So our Acts reading actually ended in verse 21, which says, And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But St. Luke goes a little further into some of these things. Uh, and continuing in verse 36, St. Luke writes, Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they, that is the crowds, heard that him or heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and they were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayers. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved." Scripture is God's Word. It's His creative, saving, living, and breathing Word. And no matter how often we read the Bible, no matter how familiar we become with its message, it always has something new to teach us. And over the years, the account of this special Pentecost that we read about in Acts chapter 2 has often had a few new things to teach me. One of the things that many people do not know or just don't realize is that though this Pentecost was very special, it actually wasn't the first Pentecost. In fact, the Lord instituted Pentecost about the same time that he instituted the Passover. Pentecost was actually originally called the Feast of Weeks. And since the Feast of Weeks came 50 days after the Feast of First Fruits, People began calling it Pentecost based on the Greek word for 50. <laughs> Pentecost and the Feast of Weeks are actually the same festival, and the Jews have celebrated Pentecost ever since the day of Moses, actually. And it's actually one of three feast days that required the presentation of males of Israel. The law of Moses said in Deuteronomy chapter 16, three times a year shall all your males appear before the Lord your God at the place that he will choose, at the feast of unleavened bread, the feast of weeks, and at the feast of booths. The feast of unleavened bread is one week long, and it begins the day after the Passover. The Feast of Weeks, or Pentecost, comes 50 days after the Feast of First Fruits, which happens on the first Sunday of that Feast of Unleavened Bread. The Feast of Booths is about six months after the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now here's a whole bunch of, of historical stuff for you, right? So why does this matter? Well. If you actually think about these things and you overlay these festivals over the life of Christ, we actually learn that Jesus died on Passover and he rose from the dead on the feast of first fruits, making him the first fruits of the dead. And then the Holy Spirit manifested himself in a very special way just 50 days later at Pentecost. So the faithful Israelites who followed the instructions that God had given to Moses would be in Jerusalem for these three special feasts. 
That means that the faithful who presented themselves in Jerusalem according to these instructions from the law were there as witnesses in Jerusalem of the crucifixion and the resurrection, as well as the manifestation of the Holy Spirit 50 days later on Pentecost. So in this way, the Holy Spirit gathered together his Old Testament church to hear about the mighty works of God in Jesus Christ. And God, the master strategist, had all of this stuff worked out thousands of years before it happened. This brings us to something else that had really not occurred to me for quite some time. As I was growing up in the church, I always enjoyed Pentecost. I always enjoyed hearing about the Holy Spirit being poured out on the apostles at Pentecost. How wonderful of God to give them the Holy Spirit in this wonderful visual audio way. But there's actually another giving of the Holy Spirit in Scripture. And it happened on the day that Jesus rose from the dead. On the evening of the first day of the week, the disciples were gathered in a house. They had locked the door because they were afraid of the Jews. And Jesus came in and stood among them, and he said to them in John chapter 20, verses 19 to 23, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples then were glad that they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Did you hear it? Jesus already gave the Holy Spirit to the apostles on the day of the resurrection. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. So if Jesus gave them the Holy Spirit on the day of the resurrection, then why did the Holy Spirit have to come at Pentecost? Didn't Jesus get it right the first time? As a minister of the gospel, as a, a pastor, even I get distracted. I'd gotten so distracted by the wow factor of the things that we see on Pentecost, the almost violent, mighty rushing wind, the tongues as a fire that hovered over the apostles' heads, the apostles speaking in tongues, speaking in languages they'd never learned. It's easy to get wrapped up in those things and to miss the really important things. For years, I didn't notice the major miracle at Pentecost wasn't those things. The miracle showed up in the response of those who gathered on that day. They came together, they heard the mighty works of God, and then they responded in Acts chapter 2, verses 37 to 41. Now when they had heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. There is the great miracle of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit added 3,000 souls to his church on that day. Pentecost really isn't about the Holy Spirit pouring out his power on the apostles. It's about the Holy Spirit poured out on 3,000 other souls as well. In his explanation to the third article of the Apostles' Creed, Martin Luther wrote that the Holy Spirit is the one who calls us, gathers us, enlightens us, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth, keeping it in Jesus Christ, in the one true faith. The Holy Spirit's manifestation on Pentecost is an example of that. 
1,500 years before this special Pentecost, the Holy Spirit worked through his servant Moses to establish the feasts that would gather all of these witnesses together, gather all of these witnesses from the Old Testament church into Jerusalem so that Luke the evangelist could write, as he does in Acts chapter 2, verse 5, Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. It was not at all an accident that these men were in Jerusalem on this day. The Holy Spirit had called together this Old Testament church to tell them that the long-awaited Messiah had come in the person of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit was getting ready to convert the faithful of that Old Testament church into the faithful of the New Testament church. That's the reason for these supernatural signs. The Holy Spirit was gathering his church together so that they could hear the call of the gospel. And the people of the Old Testament church drew near to the house. And as they did, they encountered people who told them who Jesus was, who told them what Jesus had done for their salvation. And these people didn't speak in high and lofty languages like the language spoken for the Hebrew temple, nor in the street language of Aramaic. They didn't speak the commercial language of Greek or the legal language of Latin. No, instead, each of these sojourners heard in their own language, their own native language, the language that they had learned from their mother and father in their childhood home. Each one of them heard the mighty works of God. These amazing things were the Holy Spirit's means to gather his people together, to tell them that their wait was over. Messiah had come. The New Testament had begun. Those who gathered together on that day had been looking forward to the Messiah. They'd been keeping the ceremonial law of circumcisions and sacrifices and all the other customs that were reminders that one day the Messiah would come to fulfill the whole law and to offer himself up as the once for all time sacrifice to end sacrifices. Their faith looked forward to the future, to the Messiah who was to come and was now here. The Holy Spirit gathered the church together to tell her that the Messiah had come in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. He is the Messiah, the Christ, the Anointed One. And on this particular Pentecost, the Holy Spirit called together all of these people to create his church. Amid all the amazing things that happened on that Pentecost, it's really easy to confuse God's goal with the means that he used to accomplish that goal. After all, this is pretty exciting stuff. A great sound like a violent, mighty rushing wind that many heard, not just those in the house, but outside the house. The appearance of what looked like flames of fire hovering over men's heads. The ability to speak in a foreign language that you never learned. It's easy to get distracted by these things and to forget the main goal. The goal of creating faith in the person and work of Jesus Christ. That was the goal of the Holy Spirit on that Pentecost so long ago, and that's still his goal today. Amid the signs and the wonders of this Pentecost, even then there were still those who resisted. There were men in the crowd who mocked the apostles and said, they are filled with new wine. In any crowd, there will always be those who resist the call of the gospel. And you know what? This can actually be a great comfort to us. Because as we confess our faith to others throughout our lives, sometimes they'll be interested and they'll want to know more. Other times, they'll reject our confession. And when that rejection comes... We can take comfort in knowing that even when there was the sign 
of a sound of a mighty rushing wind, the sign of flames hovering over men's heads, the sign of apostles speaking in many different languages, speaking directly to the hearts of the people. There were those who resisted their message. We should expect that to continue, but we should also continue to confess our faith in Christ for the forgiveness of sins. On the day after that very special Pentecost, there was no sound of mighty rushing wind. There were no tongues of fire. People spoke simply in their own language. Nevertheless, the Holy Spirit was still at work. The story goes on after today's reading, and it says the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. God's church still had his word. It still had the Holy Spirit who continued to work through that word. And even today, the Holy Spirit continues to work through the word of God. It has always been that way, and it always will be that way. The true sign of the Holy Spirit at work in a church is the confession of God's word by his people. Not just by those who are divinely called to do so publicly to those who are gathered together, but by you, by all who believe. The Holy Spirit points to Jesus, who is the God-man who saved us from our sin through his suffering and death and through his resurrection. Jesus is the one who promises us everlasting life through our connection to his resurrection, given to us in baptism. The Holy Spirit works through God's word when we hear it with our ears, when we read it with our eyes, when we experience that word in the water of holy baptism, remembered every time we gather together, as we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And when we receive the true body and blood of Jesus in the Lord's Supper, the Holy Spirit is at work in us when we confess our faith here before each other. We do this in the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, or those odd times that we say the Athanasian Creed. We do this as we sing the faith together in the hymns, as we walk through the faith together in the liturgy. The Holy Spirit is at work within us here in this place, but not just here. He continues to work within us as we take him out of this place. You take Jesus out of this place when you hear his word here and use it out there. When you take him bodily in through the taking in of his body and blood. We often think of reaching out to other people outside the church as evangelism, as something better left to a board or left to someone younger or maybe left to someone who's older, but in the end for someone else to do. But this is the very reason that we gather together. We gather together to be forgiven by our Lord, to receive his gifts and to take those gifts out with us when we leave here. Every single one of us comes here to be strengthened by our Lord through receiving his word into our ears, through receiving his word into our mouths, so that we go forth from this place sharing his word. This is the reason we continue to exist on this earth, rather than the Lord just calling us home now or at the time of our baptism. In today's Acts reading, the Holy Spirit used light and sound to call the church to hear the announcement that Jesus had come, that he was the one we were looking for, and he is the one who has saved us. The Holy Spirit transformed the Old Testament church into the New Testament church, and the Holy Spirit continues to build his church today. He does that through us. The Holy Spirit still calls us by the gospel, enlightens us with his gifts, sanctifies and keeps us in this one true faith. 
as he gives each of us new birth into this holy Christian church day by day. In this church, he daily and richly forgives us all of our sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise you and all the dead and give eternal life to you and all believers in Christ. This is a wonderful truth, and it is most certainly true, for Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We can still say that on Pentecost. Amen. Please bow your heads with me in prayer. O oh Lord, help us to devote ourselves to your word and to the teachings of the apostles and the church fathers before us. Even in these uncertain times, bring us together around your word and sacraments to find peace amidst tumult, to find life in a world of death, and make us constant in prayer, not only for ourselves, but for one another. Give us new hearts full of gladness and generosity, praising you and aiding our neighbor. Add to our number those who are being saved as we share your word with all those we meet. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please rise as we continue with the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all according to their needs. Almighty God, you have blessed us in love with the Savior to whom the nations cry and in whom is forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Grant to us, your Holy Spirit, the comforter whom you have promised, that we and all who call upon his name shall be saved. Help us to treasure in our hearts your mercy and give ourselves fully to your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you delivered your word through Moses and the prophets and fulfilled your word in Christ. He was planted in death for our sins and raised for our justification, and in him shall all the nations of the earth be united. Give us pastors who will preach this word faithfully and church workers who are devoted to your service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised the thirsty will drink and from the empty will flow forth rivers of living water. Help us to show forth in holy lives the fruits of the Spirit and to live with love toward our neighbor. Give us a servant's heart that doesn't seek our own way, but walks on the path of eternal life. You have promised to make one people from the many. Take from us all pride, prejudice, and hate, that we may not hinder the cause of the gospel, but give welcome to all people in the name of Christ. Guide, protect, bless, and keep all those hurting and affected by the tragic events in Minneapolis, and bring peace to communities in turmoil. Have mercy and spare us, good Lord. Put an end to this pandemic and restore the communities of the world to their common life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have ordered all things in heaven and on earth. Bless Donald, our president, Christie, our governor, our Congress of these United States, and all elected and appointed civil servants, that the rule of law may protect the weak, preserve life from conception to its natural end, and that peace may reign for the benefit of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you carry the burdens of our lives in your hands. Deliver from illness and suffering all who cry to you for release. Hear us on behalf of the sick, the dying, and all those who mourn, especially for Brandy and Roger, Pastor Dell and Joyce, Dolores, Amy, and Brenda, Joyce, Monica, Barbara, Leona, and all those we now name in our hearts. Answer your people, dear Lord, and deliver them from their infirmities and their grief by your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Almighty God, your word endures forever. Give us grace so that we may be united in doctrine and in the fellowship of your table, confessing Christ boldly and living together in faith and love until our Lord returns in his glory to bring all things to their appointed completion when we will dwell in his house forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, hear your people for the sake of him who loved us even to death and who lives to call to himself all who will be saved. You know what we need and those things that we should ask in your name. Grant them to us for the sake of our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our offertory hymn.
let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn, Send Forth by God's Blessing. <laughs>